Hey everyone, it's me again, and in this video I'm going to explain the selection sort algorithm in computer science. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay everybody, selection sort. Selection sort is an in-place comparison sorting algorithm that keeps track of the minimum value during each iteration. And at the end of each iteration, all we do is swap variables. How I like to imagine this is that let's say that our array is a bunch of different closed boxes and each box contains a number and they're all out of order. So what we'll do is we have a flashlight too because we're in the attic and it's really dark. So we have a flashlight. We will open each box beginning with the beginning of our array and we'll take a look at the value inside. Okay, nine is a fairly small number, I guess, right? So we will move this value to some temporary storage. We'll keep track of the index of the minimum value. Nine is the new minimum. Let's open the next box and holy crap, it's a one. One is a really small number. So that will be the new minimum. Then we'll open the next box, which is an eight. One is still less than eight. Let's move on. The next box is two, seven, three, six, four, and five. One was the minimum value during this iteration, and we need to move this value to the place that we started during this iteration, index zero. So we'll have to do some good old variable swapping. So we will take nine, place it within some temporary storage, then take one and place it where nine was, then take nine and place it where one was. And that is the first iteration. Let's move on to iteration two, and we'll clear min and temp. Okay, so this portion is done now. We're not worried about it. This is the new beginning of the next iteration. And well, nine is a low number, I guess. We'll move that to min. But eight is even lower than nine, so we'll move that to min. Holy crap, it's a two. Two is the new min for sure. And then we just repeat this process over and over again. Two is the current minimum of this iteration. One was the minimum of the first iteration, but we're not concerned with that. It's already sorted. So we need to move two to where we began this iteration at index one. And currently there's a nine in there. So we're going to evict this nine, place it within some temporary shelter, take two, place it within where we started at index one, then take nine, place it where two was. And that is the second iteration. Now that we kind of know how this process works, I'll speed up the rest of the video for this demonstration. So let's begin at index two. And that is the selection sort algorithm. The selection sort algorithm has a runtime complexity of big O of n squared. The larger the data set, the more and more inefficient that using the selection sort algorithm is going to be, although it's okay with smaller data sets. Now let's create our own selection sort algorithm. Okay, let's implement a selection sort. We'll need an array or other collection to work with. Let's create an array of integers because I want to make this as easy as possible. So integer array. And make up some random numbers, make sure that they're not in order. What about 8, 7, 9, 2, 3, 1, 5, 4, 6, I guess. Then let's use a for each loop to iterate over the elements of this array. For int i in array 
we will display each element with a print statement. System.out.print i. And let's run this once, just to be sure that everything is working fine. So 879-231-546. Everything is working as it should. So before we display the elements of our array, let's invoke a selection sort function, which we still need to declare. So selection sort, and we will pass our array as an argument because, well, that's what we want to sort, right? So selection sort, and we'll need to create this method. I will cheat and use the shortcut. So outside of our main method, let's declare private static void selection sort. There is one parameter, an array of integers. We'll need a pair of nested loops to iterate over our array. So let's work on the outer loop. For int i equals zero, we will continue this as long as i is less than array's length property minus one, then increment i by one during each iteration. Then there is a nested loop within here, change i to j. So j equals i plus one. j is less than array length and j plus plus. So we'll need to keep track of the minimum. So we'll do that outside of our nested loop. Int min equals i. So that is the current minimum. And within the nested for loop, we will check to see if our array at index of min is greater than array at index of j. If it is, we will change our min to equal j. Then outside of our nested loop, but within the outer loop, we will do some good old variable swapping. So int temp equals array at index of i to store this element. Array at index of i equals array at index of min. Then lastly, array at index of min equals temp. And that's all there is to it. So after running this program, our array is now sorted via the selection sort algorithm. Then of course, if you need your array or collection sorted in descending order, currently it's in ascending order, all we do is swap this greater than sign with a less than sign. And this will now be sorted in descending order depending on what you need. Well, okay then everybody, that is the selection sort algorithm. It will search through an array and keep track of the minimum value during each iteration. At the end of each iteration, we swap variables, and that's all there is to it. It runs in quadratic time, big O of n squared. It's okay with small data sets, even more so than bubble sort, and it's pretty terrible with large data sets. The larger the data set, the more and more inefficient that this selection sort algorithm is going to be. So that is the selection sort algorithm. If you learned something new, give this video a big fat thumbs up, drop a random comment down below, and well, that is the selection sort algorithm in, I guess, computer science.